Welcome, 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 good learners. This is again in our line of uh, coverage. Uh, Silence Song and Other Stories. We say that we're going to look uh, at those particular anthologies story wise, and of course, in their order of uh, procession. And so far, so good. We've done like five, if I'm not wrong. And uh, this one is going to be our sixth. And that is The Incident in the Park by Major Mwangi. Brace yourself, buckle up. I would advise that you find yourself comfortable, a place that you are not really disturbed, a place that you feel like you're doing your studies and especially at your study comfort. A notebook, a pen, and of course, the right set of mind. Now, in case again, you're coming across this particular content and it is uh, by accident, a friend of yours referred you to this particular channel or you bumped across it accidentally. How about this? You don't want to bump across this work again in the near future accidentally and you wouldn't want again to uh, to let your friends or keep on referring you to maybe good stuffs out there. Subscribe. By subscribing and hitting that notification bell up there means that our future updates should be the first one to be notified of uh, of 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 a newest maybe of a, of a, of our newest work that you're going to be uploading in the near future number two uh share it with good friends again and also the third one is give a comment down there the comment will give me motivation and encouragement uh to keep on uh, to to make me keep on doing what exactly i'm doing here now without that much further ado let's exactly get into the work and see what is in the incident in the park by major Mwangi, welcome. Let's first of all start with the synopsis. Um, the Incident in the Park by Major Mwangi is a contemporary episode set in the city park and its environs where most citizens, hustlers, and workers spend most of their time as an outdoor recreation center. We know it is the popular Uru Park in Nairobi, through its vivid description. So in fact, good learners, you might find also that there is a use of language. Description is also another way of trying to get the attention of the, of the, of the readers. Uh, and especially when it is a narrative whereby a perspective is given and the, the setting, the setting is described or the setting of the happening at the very onset is established and that one is usually achieved by the use of a description uh, mostly you can find adjectives um, are populated or maybe painted to uh, bring out the setting of this particular place and how do we even know that through those particular description that it's urupak is definitely that there is the setting which is already established at the very beginning now metaphorically described now a metaphor again good learners is the use of an object an image uh, to represent an object. In other words, um, one thing is indirectly likened to another, bringing out the comparison aspect. For example, when you say, my mother is a lion, it doesn't exactly mean that there is an explicit meaning there. It implies that the characters of a lion are the ones which purported or portrayed by the mother or the, the speaker's mother rather in this context. So metaphorically, this particular setting or this park is described. The park is seriously affected by the drought in August. There is a dirty lake at its base and to the west up the hill, a cathedral, modern fortresses and ministerial offices overlooking the park below. And across it is the city itself, a highway, Uhuru Highway. It separates the park from the city and on it there is heavy traffic in the East Parliament and two city clocks are seen. Definitely from that kind of uh, clear description, it gives or paints a picture of what we are talking about here. Therefore, the park provides a relaxing heaven a chilling point, and a source of solace for the misplaced, lost, or frustrated masses flocking the city daily. This has attracted many people, including peddlers trying to make ends meet and idlers killing time here. 
The city hungry office workers also buy cheap snacks during the lunch hour and return to their stations. Others rush down to the river road to buy chips and roast meat as the loiterers watch the specter in the jiffy. Soon the park is left with a few idlers and peddlers. Under the slightest shade lie men sheltering from scorching sun. Watchers watch rowers paddling, reacting to the maximum that spectating is the next best thing to participating. <laughs> a loafer keeps dropping debris to the fish pond, despite the warning inscription on a board. Another man joins him, and a dialogue ensues, and they share a cigarette. An incident erupts when two city constables demand to see the license of the ice cream man and a food seller. The old man helplessly searches and realizes that he doesn't have it. Worse. He has no identity card, so he offers the five shillings that he has for the fee as the judge and going to, to, to jail. Rather, He begs for forgiveness, offering all the fruit in vain. On seeing that they are unimpressed, he flees to find refuge in the crowded city, and the cops chase him. He is nabbed by a man on the highway and eventually falls into a ditch. There, the poor man is condemned and heard of for being a thief. Okay, that, of course, marks the end of that particular tiny little synopsis. And let's look at the title of the story. How significant is the title of the story? Um, the significance of the title of the incident in the park, what is ironic about the two constables' behavior at the park, and how else do the people spend time at the park? Obviously, it's ironic that this is not what we expect from constables, especially those who are in, maybe um, trying to instill peace and tranquility, especially in this particular park. Now, ironic is that the man was innocent, but he's deemed to be a thief by the end of it, by just fear and trying to run away from the constables who deemed themselves as police. And of course, the title is very... Uh, significant in this case that the incident um, it's happening again in the park a park is a place which is supposed to be serene uh, you know a safe heaven quote unquote uh, a place a solace offering solace for especially those who are maybe uh, lost even as we've seen flocking the city maybe in search of jobs and so it really had to provide that one but indeed uh, in, in this case it didn't uh, let's look at um the thematic concerns, what are some of the uh, themes that are portrayed or that uh, crop up from, the, uh, from this particular uh, short story? We have problems of urbanization. That's the first one. Urban population growth, driven by migration and searching for jobs, has become a significant issue in cities like Nairobi. However, the masses end up frustrated due to a skills mismatch in the labor market, dwindling economy and poor governance. But every now and then, a misplaced person rose with a start. That is evidently on page seven. In a few seconds, the thousand or so strong swarm had been swallowed by up by yawning concrete jungle. Urban poverty is also witnessed as many remain loitering and idling. Reminding the park lounges just how many hours that they had wasted lying idle. In a few seconds, the thousand or so strong swarm had been swallowed up by the yawning concrete jungle. We have already repeated that one, so let's just redo it again. And then urban poverty is also witnessed as men remain loitering and idling, reminding the park lounges just how many hours that they had wasted lying idle. Another point of support of the urbanization, the problem, is that a shaggy, thin man sat under a shrub, hairy loafer, the idler seated on the bank, torn trouser legs, and horny to toes, rather in this case. As you can find that on page 9, page 8, and page 7. There is also evidence of poor hygiene. The park is littered with debris, cigarettes, ants, and bats. The two gentlemen share paths on the cigarette. One offers a full cigarette, and smoking in this zone could be a form of escapism from their poverty. The fruit seller has only 10 shillings, which he offers to the constables to, pay, to spare him. 
as an issue of poverty, he cannot afford to pay for the license or even the fine that has on another case. Two, we've got conflicts between city authority and street hawkers. That is our second uh, thematic concern. When the two constables are caused and demand licenses from the ice cream man and the fruit peddler, they tell the merchant that he will only explain to the judge. The fruit seller already has a case and is trying to sell to afford a fine. That is on page 11. The fruit seller pleads with the constables who say nothing. The fruit seller cast them and their wives and, of course, children. Now, that seven days is a mistake supposed to be the fruit seller. Hope you're getting that one right. Yeah, don't kill me. <laughs> and then also the third thematic concern there is the mob justice or social injustice. The fruit seller is lynched unknowingly by the park people. By the time the constable ran up, the fruit peddler lay like a broken and twisted ragdoll at the bottom of the ditch. He cries and pleads for mercy in vain. Had drawn thick red blood over this parsley beaded face, dead was his verdict. That is maybe from the mob around that dead that was deemed to die because he was mistaken to be a thief. The word thief hovered over the assembled crowd, mob universally condemns him, and it is impossible to tell from which mouth the condemnation is issued. Ironically, the mob heard what was right, justice fairly quickly and completely administered. That's it. Now, those are some of the thematic concerns that briefly we can just look at for now. And then let's look at the character and the character traits from this particular anthology itself, the short story, The Fruit Seller. He is a poor old man who sells fruits at the park. He has no license or identity card. He is a responsible man, and as he remembers, he has a family which depends on him when accosted. I have a wife and children, and... End of there. He is hardworking because he sells fruits to baskets to earn his living despite being unable to afford a license. He is afraid and fearful that he will be fined or be castrated by the tyrant judge. Uh, that is the main character that we have over there. And of course, the two policemen who are not really developed in, this, in the narrative. So let's look at the style and language quickly, even as we're winding it up. Now, we might not really look at it, but if you've read the text, you would have realized that there are a couple of uh, maybe lines that sh uh, maybe that um, th that highlight or maybe bring out uh, the use of language and the styles and their effect, how effective is the use of these particular speeches of language. Now, the figures of speech does the writer. What figures of speech does the writer use to describe the park and events in the, in the park? We've got vivid description. We've got the use of metaphors, similes, and of course, maybe we shall be having another session in the near future about the styles and language use. But for now, let's just look at this one here because you're about to wind it up. And uh, just briefly to mention that um, any kind of writing, especially in this case, it's done in the third person perspective. Now, uh, and also the stage, the setting, I mean, the, the, the happening where these all these particular events are happening has been um, uh, clearly uh, uh, suggested from the very onset, metaphorically. And that uh, metaphor is, of course, one of the figures of speech that writers usually use to convey their message. And usually it's effective because it paints an, an, an exact picture or it imprints a picture in the reader's mind of the place or the thing in description. Just like when you can say, my mother is a lion, and now if 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 if, if the listeners they don't get to know the the speaker's mother, they can you know relate with the characters and the attributes of a lion, and then maybe associate or link these or connotate the lion's um uh, uh, behaviors and attributes to the mother, and it does uh, and the listeners they don't have really exactly to have to see the mother in person, but they can connotate the attributes and the characters of a lion in that case. So. 
what we have here is that the park it's described metaphorically at the very beginning which of course paints an exact imprint of that particular park in the reader's mind and that really in that context makes the use of uh, speech i mean the use of language and we're going to be looking at, at many other use of language that have been used in this text later on in our future up uploads and then also it's very ironic irony has very clear irony because we're not going, just only going to mention through it um, we're not ponder or we're not going to expound in details on it but later on i'm going to have a different a different a different session whereby we'll be looking at this particular use of language individually and how effective they are irony of course quickly irony it's very, it's ironic um, the one who's thought to be a thief indeed wasn't a thief was that another old man with the family was trying to make the ends meet here who has been deemed purportedly to be a thief simply by being scared and running away from those two constables <laughs> now exam style questions will ask you to explore the use of dialogue okay now in the text there's also dial dialogue is also one way of figures or this is a stylistic device or is a figure of a speech that writers usually use and what dialogue does it it it, it enhances what you call character traits it is it is true uh, dialogue that we get to know one's character and behaviors or the the the, 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 the character's traits and also through dialogue we also get to uh, the, the text gets to get more interesting because you know it cannot be just be a narrative from all the beginning until the end narrating and narrating and narrating in that particular manner somehow the break of monotony has to happen in between so dialogue comes in to make the text more interesting uh, to make it sound more immediate as though that it's happening as the time of speaking and what dialogue again i already said that dialogue does is that it 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 it, it, it incorporates it's more engaging you get to know uh, more about uh, the characters because this one speaks the other one responds and then if they respond using selective kind of words then we get to judge them of their motives their attitudes through the choice of words that they're going to use just like you can imagine of a stern strict teacher reprimanding a student now for us to know that the teacher is very stern and very reprimanding uh, the selective choice of words or the choice of words that the teacher would be using in this context will exactly tell us will make us conclude that he is a stern one he's a harsh he's cruel now not all teachers are harsh cruel and stern the teacher could be corrective uh, maybe trying to reach for this particular learner here who has maybe made a mistake so through dialogue all those uh, uh ideas that i've just mentioned they come out clearly and we're also going to be looking in the near future over the same and also we've got urban centers are riddled with frequent conflicts with innocent citizens riddled so the use of riddling now it's one way of trying to uh you know bring a concept or an idea uh by trying to trick it or trying to twist it in such a way that it leaves the listeners uh to think now as the listener, the listeners are thinking it becomes more engaging even at a subconscious level because if i introduce a topic or if the readers i mean the writers they want to bring out a certain topic but they're using a riddle then it does not only mean that uh, the, the, the readers are left wondering what's going on the fact that they are left wondering is one way of trying to engage them even at a subconscious level by the use of now riddles sometimes even proverbs uh, so urban centers especially in this particular context they've been riddled with frequent conflicts with the innocent citizen now discuss the truth of this assertion based on major monkey's incident in the park now of course the question will want you to uh, come up with uh, well organized um ideas and sentiments about what you've learned now what you're going to be learning from this is not going to be explicit it's going to be implied what is implied in incident in the park not exactly as it has been purportedly directly or explicitly in indicated but uh, uh, you're going to expound on the implications of this particular incident in the park 
and of course this one is going to uh, give you 20 marks and again i just want to say that we're also going to create time for the same we have a lot on our plate but we need to really uh, approach this elephant in the house step by step we cannot just you know deal with everything everything at a go but i hope that at this particular up to this particular point all the way from the beginning up to this particular point you've uh, mastered and you've learned some one two three four ideas that maybe will guide you or will maybe enlighten you or make you step up your game as far as english literature is concerned i would want to pause here for now so that i prepare for another upload maybe another short story but for now it's an adios cheers